So our next question was, we've talked a lot about RNA polymerase, but there's other transcription factors, uh, kind of like the LAC repressor is one of those transcription factors that um, listens to the environment to turn on or off um, the um, gene. There's also just transcription factors that bind along with RNA polymerase to help it start transcription. It's not just all RNA polymerase. And so people um, knew that there were these multiple proteins that bind to the promoter. And the question was, do they bind sequentially? Is it one binds and the next and then the next? Or do they bind all at once? And so to do this, they used a technique called a gel shift. It's also called um, um, an electromobility shift assay or EMSA. And what you can see here in this kind of cartoon drawing of a gel is that in a gel shift assay, you are going to just image the DNA. And the question is, does the DNA have proteins bound or not? And this time, rather than what we saw with the gel electrophoresis that takes advantage of the DNA size, we're going to take advantage that DNA migrates much slower if proteins are bound to it. So you have a short piece of DNA, and um, the, that will migrate somewhere in the gel, and then DNA proteins migrate much slower. And so that gives you a DNA shift up if the proteins are bound. So for example here, this is this little cartoon here is where the, the free DNA would bind um, that we're showing here. And then if you have a DNA plus protein complex bound, then you um, would get a shift up in the gel. And so it would tell us, ah, these things are bound. So then people wanted to go forward and see if that's what's happening with RNA polymerase and the other transcription factors. So to start, they looked at, we can see we have RNA polymerase that we've talked a lot about here and three other transcription factors that are important for transcription. And so we start with our control, the negative control, just DNA, no proteins, because this tells us where the promoter alone is or just that DNA sequence where it resides in the gel. Then the next question is, what happens when we add all of the proteins together? Where does that shift? And so here we see the shift in the gel and we see now the band is much higher up here. And then the next question that we're really interesting is, if we get rid of one factor at a time, can all the proteins still associate or not, or do they not associate? And what we see if we look at the data is that DNA is not bound to any proteins, and so the DNA is not shifted up, and so you must need all of the factors there to get everything brown, bound. So this is even true for RNA polymerase that it can't bind unless it has the other factors around.